All right, man, you guys have been hitting me up saying, Eastwood, Eastwood, you got to react to this, uh, what Joel Embiid said on Tyrese Maxey's podcast. So we're going to go ahead and listen to that and do a live reaction. And also, the Chicago Bulls are trying to bullshit everybody, all right? You can't bullshit a bullshitter. Bulls, Chicago bullshitters. Run it back, Philly. No fraud, no fanboys, no intros. All right, let's go find it. All right, so Joel Embiid was on Maxey's podcast and... uh, or just, I listened to a second of it. I just want to say this is amazing. Tyrese Maxey being a podcaster is just phenomenal, dude. He's great. Uh, let's just hear what Joel Embiid said. The thing that he said about Ben Simmons that everyone's sending to me. Let's go. Let, let's hear it, okay? What do you think it was hard to play with, Ben or James? Because it was difficult. Yo, yo, what? Yo, I. <laughs> Did Tyrese Maxey just say straight up that it was difficult to play with James Harden? <laughs> I love that. Oh, my God. What do you think it was hard to play with, Ben or James? Which, I don't know why. It, did, did they record this on a phone with no microphone? It sounds like they're in a hallway or something. But anyway, let's let's just, okay. <laughs> we don't want this to be a half hour long. Let's go. What do you think it was hard to play with, Ben or James? Because it was difficult. Yo, yo, what? Did you have a hard time playing with that? Me? Yeah. It was different for me. How? One, when Ben was here, I wasn't a part of offense, really. Like, no one really, I didn't play with Ben that much. I was always coming in for him. You know? Till he quit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I played with Dwight. So I never played with Ben. You know? That was a Doc Rivers thing. Uh, you were too young. You were too young for Doc Rivers. It would have been nice, you know, because that's what Ben needed really his whole career is a combo uh, ball handling point guard who could shoot the three next to him. I've been saying that since the Trey Burke days. Shout out to Walmart Allen Iverson. R.I.P. Trey Burke. Anyway, let's continue. I'm saying James was different for me as well. I also had never had it like freedom to be on the ball as like yeah. I am now. So like I always played a role those two three years when I oh what are you are you saying you played within James Harden's system the system that he claims he didn't get to play here in Philly like you always been you're the best player on the team yeah. always since you you know what I'm saying since you stepped foot in there so I said yeah so me I was playing a you know what I'm saying with James K I'm just like a, a role guy you know what I'm saying I'm like all right look I don't I don't have no say so it's year two for me like I'm just happy to I, even, yeah. let's be honest I'm just happy to be here. You know what I'm saying? It was different for sure because of how he played, but hey, I don't, I want to play. You know me, I want to play. I don't, I don't think it was uh, I don't think it was hard to play uh, with any of them. I think the the only thing that I say about Joel's not going to buy into that, but I love how honest Tyrese Maxey is on this podcast, bro. You know, probably each of them. You know, the you know, I, I just think, and I've I've always been one of you know. Those people that didn't believe that he didn't actually need a jumper, like come out, like he, yeah, yeah, like he, he was. <laughs> Joel, don't lie to the people, man. Don't lie. Don't lie to the... Joel. Joel, don't do this to me, Joel. I've always been one of those people that didn't believe that he needed a jumper. Joel Embiid, stop it right now. You stop it right now, Joel Embiid. You know basketball better than that, Joel Embiid. Let's. So good. Like, just freaking, he's just a monster. Like, just physically, like, someone is freaking 6'11, just running up and down the floor faster than whatever. Um, then I don't know, almost as fast as you. Right. Almost. You faster than me, but right, right. almost as fast. Think about six eleven. I agree. Boy, is, freak. I agree with that. He was a freak, bro. Okay, jumping hard. Was just on oh my guarding everybody. That's, yeah, guarded like one through five, yeah. like freaking monster. But you like, know what? Strong. So like I never believed that he actually needed the jumper. Right. I just believed that 
you know, if he could find a way to get his free throws to, you know, 75, 80%, yeah, yeah. that would have changed everything. Because if you think about it, if he believed that he could make shots, what would he do? He would keep attacking, attacking, yeah. attacking, and never stopping. Right. Like, because, like, and then what would the defense have? I understand what you're saying, Joe, a little bit, but I got I got a rebuttal, but I understand what you're saying a little bit. He 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 stopped attacking uh because he couldn't shoot free throws. To do, he was already such, you know, such a great playmaker, you right. know, making the guy the game easy for, you know, everybody else. Uh cuz obviously with me, for me, you know, it's better if, you know, we sh- you space, know, I have people around yeah. me that can you when know, you move pass. It's better in space, but he doesn't need a jump but I, yeah. I never believed that you know with both of us on the same thing I never believed that he needed to do alright Joe alright Joe everything you just said about Ben Simmons here, here's the thing Joe everything you just said about Ben Simmons is true 6'11 beast not anymore because he quit playing basketball and keeps making up uh, back injury to, to get paid to not play, but early on in his career, yes, rookie season, second season, six eleven, fast as hell, just a freak, just a, a a physical specimen that is rarely ever been seen. That's why he walked in and was a number one overall pick. Fast, could defend, was a playmaker at that size, was unbelievable. You're right, Joe, but but you're wrong that he didn't need a jump shot because. And I shouldn't have to say this, Joel Embiid. You know the game good enough to know this. All those great things you just said about Ben Simmons. Once everybody realized all you got to do is back up. His game was over. It was done. Everything you just said about him was effective when teams were playing him outside the three-point line. When people were trying, when defenders were trying to guard him like a real NBA guard, he could blow by him, knife through the defense, get in the middle, throw the over-the-head pass, the behind-the-back pass, the dime here, the dime there. His whole game relied on getting penetration. And then the Brooklyn Nets in the playoffs said, let's all just back up. Let's all just back up. And they started guarding him with Blake Griffin 20 feet away. And guess what? Game over. Now there's no space in the paint. He can't penetrate. His whole game is gone once you backed up because he won't shoot the ball. So, Joel Embiid, you are insanely incorrect on this take. Ben Simmons needed a jumper probably more than anybody else in NBA history needed a jumper because his entire game predicated on getting in space. And once they started to back up, his game was done and his career was done. His literally his career ended. Once people backed up because he won't shoot the ball, but I still love you, Joe, but you, 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 you're talking with your heart here and not your brain. All right. Now let's talk about (laughs) the Chicago bulls and Alex Caruso because Sixers fans, myself included would love Alex Caruso on the Sixers for the right trade package. And the Chicago bulls are Hold on a second, man. What the... Hold on a second. Chicago Bulls. The Chicago Bulls are 9-15. and They have some uh, insanely massive contracts on the roster that they desperately need to get rid of. Zach Levine, one of them, okay? But this right here is bullshit. That's what this is. A bevy of teams have have been expressing interest in trading for Bulls utility star... (laughs) Utility... Alex Caruso, league sources say, but the franchise has shut down those calls. So the Chicago Bulls, who are going nowhere fast, are trying to tell everyone that they are not trading Alex Caruso. Like he's the young, up-and-coming stud that they're going to build around. You are lying, Chicago Bulls. This is a, a ploy by the Chicago Bulls to drive up the price for Alex Caruso. First of all, calling Alex Caruso a utility star is fucking hilarious, okay? Alex Caruso is probably the best perimeter defender in the NBA, and he's a good, serviceable point guard, okay? But he averages nine points per game. 
the Chicago Bulls are lying. They're acting like this guy's a future superstar and they're going to build around Alex Caruso and they're not trading him. They're simply driving up the price of Alex Caruso. They want it to be a bidding war around the NBA and it's a smart move. I'm not falling for it though. And nobody else is falling for it. Alex Caruso averages nine points per game. Give me a damn break, Chicago. If he was that good on your terrible team, he would average way more than nine points per game. He is a role player, and nobody's falling for his BS. Now, somebody's going to overpay, which means he's probably not going to end up on the Sixers because Daryl Morey's not going to overpay. But this is bullshit, okay? It's bullshit. They're trying to drive up the price. Somebody told me that the price could be as high as three first round picks for Alex Caruso. And if anybody gives up three first round picks for Alex Caruso, they have lost their damn minds. All right. Great role player. Great defender. Not on this planet worth three first round picks. Somebody's going to fall for it, though. People keep telling me the Bulls aren't. Didn't you see they're not trading him? Didn't you see the Shams report a couple of months ago that the Clippers shut down James Harden trade? The Clippers backed out of the James Harden deal. When's everyone going to realize that these reporters are just saying shit every day to get you to go to the article, to pay the $1.99 to read the article, bro? It's a business. Just because Shams said it doesn't mean that's what's going to happen. The Bulls are trading Alex Caruso and Zach Levine, and DeMar DeRozan. Shams did say the Sixers are interested in Zach Levine. I have no interest. I did put out the video saying if the Sixers were going to trade for Zach Levine, here's what trade would probably work. But 50, 55, 60 million at the end of his contract for a guy that doesn't really elevate a team. As a third as a third option, I'm not saying Zach Levine wouldn't be a great third option. You just can't. A great third option. Great third option. Great third option. You just can't pay $50 million a year for that. You can't be locked into that four-year, $200-plus million contract for Zach Levine. I, I just, I just, I don't, I don't think you can take that, that financial uh, hit and uh, more so like the, the lack of cap space for the next four years. You're, you're, you would be, you would be solidifying the cap space you would be tying up the cap space for the rest of Joel Embiid's prime. There would you would have to be damn sure that Zach Levine is the player that you want for the next four years. Uh, it's just an overpay, and he does have a game this year where he scored two points in twenty-seven minutes. A guy that even has the ability to score two points in twenty-seven minutes is not worth that contract. Um, and the Bulls, since Zach Levine has been out, have been winning. And last night, Kobe White. Scored 33 points. We have to keep monitoring uh, and trying to see if the Bulls are actually better without Zach Levine. You know, puts up numbers, but does he really make your team better? I do think in the context of playing with Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey, he can be the Michael Porter Jr. to the Philadelphia 76ers. But again, are the Nuggets paying $50 million a year for Michael Porter Jr.? No, they're not. That's all I got, guys. <laughs> Man, I love doing this. I'll see you soon.